finally make it upstairs. So close to his bedroom despite the <gasps> cups, she kicks a bucket. Literally straight up kicks a bucket. Hey, what's up everybody, I'm Scatteray and welcome to another D&D Green Text, episode 70. Yeah, without any further ado, enjoy! Oh, and also, don't forget to smash the like button. Post monsters who, no matter how dangerous, will never be taken seriously for one reason or another. Spanner. Spanners, also called living bridges, were originally created to help guard a certain wizard's tower, but have since escaped into the wilderness. I should write something. To understand how terrifying these things really are, they can span gaps of up to 180 feet, which is equivalent to 55 meters, such as over a massive, yawning chasm with no visible bottom, and their standard attack is to just chill, pretend to be a bridge, wait until you're halfway across, and then form a hole under your feet so you fall through them. A spanner over a 200 feet deep chasm, or 60 meters, deals 20d6 damage and doesn't even need to roll to hit. This, however, will not prevent anyone from rolling their eyes at the mere fact of its existence. An easy way to make 5000 gold pieces. Pimi, low level dragonborn paladin. Need money to fix haunted house we got as a reward. Puts up brilliant idea machine. Sell my body. At first normal way, but then I took it more literally. Ended up getting drugged up as f and had another party member pick my skin, scales and horns off with daggers and sold. Got 5000 gold pieces, pocketed 3750. Worth having to make a con save nearly every turn for a while. Not worth looking like a bird embryo though. The tale of the rogue poltergeist. I was playing a gunslinger, and we just walked away with some sick loot. Me, in my infinite wisdom, tries to magic a weapon on our own, with me f***ing up the rolls. Our DM, throwing a bone, says it's not destroyed, but is cursed. The curse wasn't too bad, so I took it. Eventually, later down the line, we ran into a spooky area with fog rolling down, creepy junkyard, the whole shebang. Turns out a bunch of ghosts haunted the place. Who would have thought? Suddenly, things are tossed at us. This culminated into me low on health and everyone else dealing with other baddies. Someone made the knowledge check that this will lure poltergeists. Suddenly, my gun was ripped from my hand and floating in the air, turning towards me as if it were to fire at me. Out of character, I shouted, Oh my god, these things have rogue levels. Everyone grew silent at that. DM asked, What makes you think that? You remember the curse on my gun? Well, you have to have some rogue levels to use it, I stated. A pin dropped, then some shuffling of papers. Damn it. And laughs went around the table. <laughs> Evil campaign. Girl joins the group with a warlock sorcerer. Has the beast speech invocation. Oh cute, she's going to be talking to all the animals. Proceeds to exploit low beast intelligence again and again. Promises impossible payoffs and awful punishments in exchange for a near infinite army of familiars and spies. Walking through a city. She casts delayed blast fireball on a piece of rations. DM describes how a bead of orange light forms around the piece. Proceeds to march the rest of the rations over the bead. She calls a pigeon over to her. Convinces the bird that if it takes the ration to the top of the clock tower, it can eat the ration, and more if it comes back to her afterwards. Bird flies up to the tower where it perches, unwraps the ration and starts pecking. Massive explosion shakes the city as burning chunks of wood and rock explode outward from the tower. Well, she's doing a pretty good job of playing an, in an evil campaign. <laughs> Apparently, the GM expected us to code a script to answer the riddle as a sort of real-life hacking. Nani the f- <gasps> Huh. I once had the DM set us a puzzle based on a Bible passage. It was a locked room with no way out except the three teleporter doors. There were parts of a passage above each one of three doors. The clue was over the door we came in, now locked, but didn't correspond to any of the passages above the three doors. No, the clue was a passage from one page in the Bible, and the answer was that one of the three passages was from the same page and that halfway between these two pages was another passage, written nowhere in the room, about turning around. The solution? You had to go through the right door, walking backwards. The penalty? Walking through the wrong door, or the right door, forwards, was instant death, no save. All party members, save for one, died from walking through a teleporter door. The last one stayed trapped in the room until he died of thirst. Don't cast Shatter on a stealth mission. Be me, cobbled artificer. Peanut me, human ranger, Asimar monk, half hobgoblin, half human, half elf, half skeleton, crazy scientist. 
all level five. I, I don't think you can have four halves. I think it, I, I think that at that point there are four quarters instead of halves. Whatever. We just recently earned our freedom after being slaves to a hobgoblin arena pimp for weeks. Only slaves in the first place because we needed the king hobgoblin to help us kill an army of orcs and giants and his lackeys caught us. King useless hobgoblin still won't help us unless we kill a bunch of his rivals for him. Freedom my ass. Fine, let's kill them all that JPEG. First target is a brewer who wants a democracy instead of a monarchy. Like that will happen lul. Expert plans laid to get him drunk in front of all his followers and inject poison into him to make it look like alcohol poisoning. On our way there, a new human fighter joins the party. Some random slave girl who killed enough people to earn her freedom. Bonus rewards for us if we keep her alive. We get to the brewery. She immediately starts downing drinks. It, as long as she doesn't screw up the plan, we're good. After a long, boring speech about voting and freedom, we get him alone and our charismatic ranger walks up to him before he leaves. Really like the speech, friend. You know, I served under the king as his minion before. Wait, what, why, that gif? Hobgoblin calls him a <laughs> monarch dog and walks out. God damn it. Plan B time. Wait until the middle of the night, when I, as obviously the smartest and most superior of the group, will be sneaking into his house. New human fighter says she's super stealthy and will easily sneak into the house with me to kill him. Fine, just do it. Post the rest of the party around the neighborhood as backup in case things go wrong. I am a sneaky cobbled, never get caught. I pick the lock to the front door easily. Fighter immediately steps on broken glass and yelps less than 10 seconds after entering the door. <coughs> me that PNG. Dumb human can't even see in the dark. Cobbled superiority for the win. I take a rock and make it glow so she's not blind. Go through the house expertly picking all the locks while stealthy girl follows. She trips and barely catches herself as we go through the second door. Actively planning out my backup character at this point. Finally make it upstairs. So close to his bedroom despite the ups. She kicks a bucket. Literally straight up kicks a bucket. She hasn't rolled above a 10 for stealth since we got in here. Steering from the bedroom. When the cobbled uprising happens, you will be among the first to die, human girl. Keep going, because we can't stop this far in. Turn the corner. Crossbow bolt flies at my head. I'm too small and sneaky. Dodge it easily. Aim lower, dumb tall legs. He screams something about the monarchy and us being slaves. Lock the door, and we hear crashing as he barricades the door. Finally, something the fighter will be good at. Rolls like a 7 or some sh <coughs> Fine, I'll do it myself, that gif. Cast shatter. Blockade blows up and makes a giant ringing sound. In the dead of night, with no other noise. Wouldn't have come to this if I went solo. I take no responsibility for this dumb human girl. Rest of the party, knowing about the f*** <coughs> up, climbs in through the window. All staring at us. Are you surprised by kobold brilliance? We find him in a corner and kill him. Are you okay, boss? The guards are here. Oh god, oh f <coughs> Everyone out the window, go, 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 go. We land on top of a city guard and kill him. All is good in the world. Wait, where is the scientist? She's <coughs> juicing the dead guy for his blood. God damn it, that JPEG. Don't care, I'm heading out. Me and the monk, deep. Obviously the plan was to follow us and run. Monk kicks a guy in the balls as I incinerate him into ash. Look back. Wait, why is no one behind me? can hear swords clashing and the sudden lightning sound. How did kobolds become the slaves to a species so dumb? Meanwhile, our doctor is still inside juicing the guy. She has a clear shot before she's cornered to hop out the window. Chucks a potion of giant strength instead. Why? Punches a hole through the wooden wall. Can I get through here? It's a hole the size of your fist. DM obviously says no. It's okay, she still has movement. Runs into the corner. Why? Literally the very first guard comes in, crits, rolls maximum damage. She's down. And then there was two. Ranger and fighter ran the other direction and started a brawl with like eight other guards. A wizard called the Devastator comes in. Does 22 damage to both of them. TPK time, boys. By some miracle of crits and low rolls from the enemies, the ranger and fighter manage to dispatch half the guards, plus the wizard. 
Ranger lets out a battery. Knight roll 20 on intimidation. Other guards flee at the sight of their leader being downed. They start limping back home, but by a stroke of luck find our scientist being dragged by four guards. Let her go, you are never here. Natural one. Intimidation only works once, I guess. Still managed to down the guards with a collective seven health between the two of them. The limp home scientist in hand, eight health total. Fighter finally rolls above a 20 and gets home without being killed by guards. Everyone is home. Human fighter girl approaches me with anger in her eyes. Let's go, soft skin. She tries to pick me up by the neck. I molt my skin and fall to the ground. Cobalt superiority at its finest. She's yelling at me about casting shatter. It's okay, I know my cobalt brain much too large for you to understand. While this is happening, the doctor is just bleeding out over the carpet. Fighter woman yells again about how she's blind in the night and I was supposed to be her guide. I gave you light to shine 5 feet for dark blind fleshy to see. Fighter storms off after 10 more minutes of arguing, leaving the entire table in tears laughing. Scientist has now gotten a hand axe and is chopping herself open to do surgery on herself. She has a negative 1 to strength and has rolled a natural 1 on damage 3 times now. Legit just bludgeoning her chest with the wooden part of the axe. Cobble brain activates. I chop her chest open. Success at JPEG. Whoops, I accidentally stuck my nose into her lung and stopped her breathing. I fix machines, not people, why does pressing on lung hurt? She's pushing me away as I try to glue her ribs back together. At like 4 health and prone, couldn't stop Alpha Cobalt like me. I eventually relent and she does self-surgery to fix internal injuries. Starts crawling to the rest of the group, like a blood slug with her chest still partially open. I shake my head. That much blood will never come out of the carpet. This is why cave is better, blood much easier to clean out of rock. Everyone eventually patches themselves up after that 4 hour long cluster <coughs> of events. Avoided the TPK by the skin of our teeth. I am smartest kobold. Will always be leader. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like if you did and subscribe for more. Also, big thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon. I really appreciate you guys, thank you for that. And yeah, if you wanna check that out, there's a link below. Also links below if you wanna join the Discord server or follow me on other social media. And yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye.